All right, turn your Bible to Deuteronomy chapter number 14. Deuteronomy chapter number 14. By the way, yesterday was my birthday, so if you forgot to wish me happy birthday, you can still do it today. Thank you. I'm officially 24, but you know, since I'm Asian, I always look young, you know, so. That's not a racial joke because I'm Chinese. So Deuteronomy 14, let's look at verse number 22. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 22. By the way, if there's anything I say that is different than what the pastor teaches, I'm wrong and he is right. Deuteronomy chapter 14, let's, let's read from verse 22. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 22. The Bible says, Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that the field bring forth year by year. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there. The tithe of thy corn, of thy wine, and of thine oil, and the firstlings of thy herds, and, 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 and of thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. And if the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, or if the place be too far from thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there, when the Lord thy God has blessed thee, then shalt thou turn it into money, and bind up the money in thine hand, and shall go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. Now the title of the sermon tonight is called, Thou Shalt Truly Tithe. Thou Shalt Truly Tithe. Now, there are a lot of people, they tithe, but do they truly tithe according to the mandate, according to requirement from the Bible? So tonight we want to do a study on tithing. We want to do a study on tithing. Now turn your you would to Hebrews chapter number 9. Hebrews chapter number 9. So point number 1. Tithing is still a mandate in the New Testament. Tithing is still a mandate in the New Testament because a lot of people, they question tithing. You know, they think tithing is still an Old Testament thing, but tonight I want to show you tithing is still a mandate in the Old Testament, uh, in, in, in the New Testament also. We know that tithing is a command in the Old Testament. The Bible says, Thou shalt truly tithe or the increase of thy seed, but tithing is still a mandate a command, if you will, in the New Testament also. Because a lot of people who object the concept of tithing in the New Testament, they think the law has been done away with, right? They think everything has been done away with. But, but the problem is not everything in the law, not everything in the Old Testament has been done away with. In Hebrews chapter 9, look at verse number 1. Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 1. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 1, Then verily the first covenant... He's talking about the Old Covenant, the Old Testament. Then verily the Old Covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. So, so the author of Hebrews is talking about the Old Covenant, that first covenant, that Old Testament. They have ordinances of religious rituals and a worldly sanctuary. In context, we know he's talking about the first tabernacle. Jump down to verse number 9. Verse number 9, the Bible says, which was, talking about the first tabernacle, a figure for the time then present. Now, whenever you see the word figure or shadow, the scripture is pointing to something. It's, rep it, it, it's representing something. So the worldly sanctuary and the divine service is a figure, verse number 9, for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. So the Bible is saying under the old covenant, People bring sacrifice, people bring gifts, and these acts cannot make that person perfect. They, that act cannot earn someone's salvation uh, and go to heaven. Note verse number 10. Which stood, I want you to notice the, the next word, only. Which stood only in meats and drinks, talking about the meat and drinks offerings, and diverse washings, talking about the cleansing uh, laws and carnal ordinances. I believe this is referring to the Levitical priesthood, imposed on them until the time of Reformation. Now, in context, we know the time of Reformation is when Jesus Christ came to this earth. Notice the only thing being done away with is in verse number 10, the meat and drinks, the diverse washings, the carnal ordinances, imposed on them until Jesus came and fulfilled 
the law. Here's the thing. Not everything in the Old Testament has been done away with. Only the ceremonial laws has been done away with. The civil laws and the moral laws still apply. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 6, verse 16, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink and or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is Christ. Now, the only thing being done away in the Old Testament is when the New Testament specifically repeal that Old Testament law. And, and the reason we don't observe Sabbath day is Jesus Christ told us He is the Lord of the Sabbath, right? The way, we can, the way we observe Sabbath is to get saved. We rest in Christ. The reason we don't do all these offerings is because uh, we can have a direct access to God. And these are the only laws that's been done away with. By the way, Jesus Christ, He didn't come to destroy the law. The Bible says, Think not that I, I'm come to destroy, but to fulfill. Paul, saying, Paul says in Romans chapter 3, Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yet we establish the law. Some people think, well, we are free in Christ. Yes, indeed, we are free to not sin, but the law still applies um, unless the New Testament has specifically repealed that law. You know, there are a lot of laws still apply. Things like the death penalty still apply. You know, the, 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 the laws against adultery, they still apply. Go to Matthew chapter 23. Matthew 23. Matthew number chapter, chapter 23. Now, there are a lot of people who are against tithing. They will... They will say, Jesus Christ never mentioned about tithing. What did Jesus say? Now, let's take a look at what Jesus Christ says about tithing. Matthew 23, look at verse 23. Matthew 23, verse 23. The Bible says in Matthew 23, verse 23, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. So here, Jesus Christ, he's saying these scribes and Pharisees, they tithe, right? In fact, they tithe pretty strictly. They even tithe uh, the mint and anise and cumin. Now, Jesus Christ is not condemning them for tithing, but because Jesus Christ said, These ought ye to have done but not to leave the other undone. So Jesus Christ has not condemned the, the Pharisee for tithing. In fact, Jesus Christ is telling them, uh, you should have been tithing. You should have been tithing this mint and onions and coming. These all they have done, but they have forsaken. They have not doing the weightier matters of the law. You know, same thing like our, like our Christians. We should have a balance in the Christian life. We should not only just read our Bible, but we should also pray. Don't just go to church, but also sharing the gospel. These all these you have done, but not to leave the other undone. So Jesus Christ is confirming. He's not condemning the scribes and Pharisees for tithing. He's, condone, he, he, he's condoning them. He's affirming these. You should, you should have done these, but don't leave the others undone. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Now, Let's just say, even if, the old, even if the law has been done away with, which we don't believe, you know, even, even if the law, even if the Mosaic law has been done away with, the problem is people has, have been tithing even before the Mosaic law. You know, we think about Abraham, he tithed to Melchizedek, right? We think about Jacob, he tithed unto God after he wrestled with God. So, so even if you say the law has been done away with, but people have been tithing even before the law, so your argument doesn't even apply. What's more, the New Testament refers to the Old Testament's teaching on tithing. The New Testament compares tithing, he's referring to the Old Testament's teaching on tithing. Now, pastor already gone through verse by verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, so let's just uh, uh, have an overview. Look at verse number 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 10. I won't develop the context. Pastor already done that on Sunday, so if you, if you have any questions, just listen to that sermon. Let me just give you a quick overview of 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Look at verse number 10. The Bible says, All said he, yet altogether for our sakes... For our sakes, no doubt that this is written, 
that he that plow, ploweth should plow in hope, and that he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of his hope. Paul is saying, if you plant something, you should hope that you're going to reap from what you plow, right? If you plant an apple tree, you should be expecting to eat apples. Verse 11, if we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? So Paul is, Paul is speaking with a group of preachers, himself being, being an evangelist. He's saying, if we have ministered unto you, if we have invested our life unto you, if we, if we have sown unto you spiritual things, it is a great thing to reap carnal things. So the question to ask you is, has your pastor invested his time in you? Has Pastor Leo Mejia talked to the Word of God? Has he given you good counsels? See, if, if he has sown unto you spiritual things, it, it, it's a great thing that he shall reap the carnal things which come from tithing. Jump down to verse 13. The Bible says, Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple, and they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? So Paul is referring back to the Old Testament. These priests, these people who minister unto the children of Israel, they live off the things from the temple. He's talking about the tithe that people have given them. I want you to notice verse 14, the first two words in verse 14. Even so, in the same manner, just like people have done in the Old Testament, so in the New Testament, even so had the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. So, what's the point? Pay your pastor. <laughs> Pay your pastor. Because tithing is still a mandate in the New Testament. Because not everything the law has been done away with. Point number one, tithing is still a mandate in the New Testament. Go to Leviticus chapter 27. Leviticus chapter 27. Now, I understand some churches can't support their pastor full time, but, but, but if a church is able to, you know, we should support a pastor full time because... Because it is a great stress, there is a great strain when a pastor work a full-time job and pastor the church full-time. There's a lot of pressure, right? A lot of people can't continue that for a long time. So if a church is financially able to, pay your pastor full-time. In, in fact, I, I'm, a fully, I'm a full supporter of full-time pastors, you know? If, if you don't think pastor is hard work, you try study and preach three sermons a week. You know, you, you try to pray and study and, and give counsel. You try to visit people. You try to just preach a well-thought, a well-studied sermon three times a week. It, 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 it's hard work. That's what the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 3. If a man desireth the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. You know, be, being in the office of the bishop is work. And the workman is worthy of his reward. So point number one... Tithing is still a mandate in the New Testament. Point number two. A tithe is 10% of your increase. A tithe is 10% of your increase. Leviticus 27, look at verse 32. Leviticus chapter 27, look at verse 32. The Bible says, Leviticus, Leviticus 27, verse 32. And concerning the tithe of the herd or of the flock, even of Whatsoever passeth under the rod, the tenth shall be holy unto the Lord. The Bible defines tithe as 10%. You might ask me, why do you just use that as a second point, the tithe is 10%? Because a lot of Christians don't realize tithing is 10%. Because a lot of Christians, when they tithe, when the offering plates come about, they throw in $10, they throw in $20. They don't tithe the full 10%. Now, let me just give you a quick calculation. Just say you, your annual income is $50,000, right? That's pretty average, $50,000. Now, what was 10% of $50,000? $5,000, right? Now, if you divide that 5000 by 52 weeks, you, know, you got roughly 96 point some dollars. So, just give you a reference. If you make $50,000 a year, in order to tithe the 10%, you need to give almost $100 every single week to meet that 10%. So 
See, a lot of people don't realize that. A lot of people, when, when the offering, offering plate pass through, they just throw in the 20 bucks and 50 bucks. But we should tithe the 10% as according to what the Bible says. You know, a tithe is 10% of your income. So if you make $50,000 $50, a year, you should tithe almost $100 every single week. And there are a lot of Christians, they are not up to that standard. They're not up to that requirement according to the scripture. Stay in Leviticus 27. So I said point number one, tithing is still a mandate in the New Testament. Point number two, a tithe is 10% of your increase. Point number three, we don't give tithe, we pay tithe. We don't give tithe, we pay tithe. Because there's, there's a phrase in that we say we give tithe, right? But, but the problem is, you know, we don't really give tithe, we pay tithe. The Bible uses the phrase pay tithe. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 7, and, and as I may say also, Levi also, who receiveth tithe, payeth tithe in Abraham. When Jesus Christ is talking about the scribes and Pharisees, he says, for ye pay tithe, a uh, means an innocent coming. The, pro the matter of fact is we don't give tithe, we pay tithe. You, you may ask why? Because the tithe belongs unto God in the first place. You are in Leviticus chapter 27. Look at verse number 30. Leviticus, Leviticus 27 verse 30. The Bible says, And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land, or of the fruit of the tree, notice, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. See, the reason we don't give tithe, we pay tithe, is because we, the tithe belongs to God. We owe God that tithe, that full 10%. That's why I believe in Malachi chapter 3. Now, I understand Malachi chapter 3, the context is referring to the priest, but it, it, I believe it can also apply to us. When, when we are dishonest with God's money, when we, steal, when, when we steal from God's money, the Bible says we are robbing God, right? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me, but ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee in tithe and offerings? Because the tithe belongs to God. If you don't pay tithe, you are robbing. You are taking what's God in the first place. In fact, the Bible is so, so serious about tithing. Look at verse 31 of Leviticus chapter 27. Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 27, verse 31. The Bible says, And if a man will at all redeem out of his tithe. Here's saying, If a man wants to use his tithe. If a man wants to delay, if a man wants to uh, redeem his tithe, he shall add there to the fifth part thereof. So here, here's what, what the Bible is saying. If a, if a person wants to use the tithe which belongs to God, he should add 20% of interest <laughs> along with it. See, it's like renting, right? You pay rent because you, because you owe the landlord the money. And if you don't pay, you have a late fee. See, the thing with tithing is we don't give tithe, but we pay tithe because the tithe belongs unto God. If we don't pay the full 10%, we are stealing, we are robbing God's money. By the way, we don't give anything until we pay that 10%. We don't give anything until we pay that 10%. A lot of people think we are giving unto the Lord. No, you're, you're just giving back what belongs to God in the first place. So I say point number one, tithing is still a mandate in the New Testament. Point number two, a tithe is 10% of your increase. Point number three, we don't give tithe, we pay tithe. Point number four, well this might give, some people may disagree with me. Point number four, we should tithe our gross income, not net income. We should tithe our gross income, not net income. Now, just in case you don't know, uh, the, your gross income is, is the amount of money you earn before anything is taken out. For example, tax, your 401k, or any other deductions. Okay, That's your gross income. That's before the tax has been taken out. Your net income is your take-home pay. It's really your paycheck after all the taxes, after all the payroll deductions has been taken out. Now, why do I say we should tithe our gross income, not our net income, because the Bible says we should tithe our first fruits. Because, you know, it's throughout the Bible, let me just read to you a couple of verses. The Bible says in Exodus chapter chapter 23, the first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring into the house of the Lord thy God. 
The Bible says in Numbers chapter 18, All the best of the oil and all the best of the wine and of the wheat, the first fruits of them which they shall offer unto the Lord, them have I given thee. Why should we tithe our girls, not our net? Because we should pay God first. See, if you choose to tithe your net income after, ta- or after the tax money has been taken out, you are paying the government first. Does that make sense? No, the Bible says we should tithe our first fruit, so, so we should adhere to what the Bible teaches on tithing. In fact, the Bible is mentioning the concept of the first fruit in, 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 in the same passage. Look at verse, 30, verse number 32 of Leviticus chapter 27. Leviticus 27 verse 32, the Bible says, And concerning the tithe of the herd or of the flock, even of whatsoever passeth under the, under the rock, the tenth shall be holy unto the Lord. Notice verse 33. He shall not search whether it be good or bad, neither shall he change it. And if he change it at all, then both it and the change thereof shall be holy, it shall not be redeemed. Here's what the Bible is teaching you. You know, if your first ten sheep, five is good, five is bad, you give it to God. No matter what, it's the first ten. Now, don't switch to give God ten bad sheep. If you have five good sheep, five bad sheep, Give them to God. Don't switch them to, don't, don't give them 10 good sheep to God. Don't give God 10 bad sheep. Whatever is 10, whatever is the first 10%, you give it to God. Don't search whether it be good or bad. And, and as Christians, how we can apply this, we pay God before we pay government. We pay the first fruit. We pay God first. Now, let me just address a question. Uh, some, some Christians may wonder, is it okay for us to claim tithe and givings on our tax return to get more money back? <laughs> now, my answer is, I believe it's okay. Because, because if you tithe the gross income, you've already given God a whole 10%, and whatever the government wants to give you back, it's your money in the first place. They steal from you. So I don't believe it's wrong to claim your tithe and giving on your tax return because if you truly, if, if thou shalt truly tithe the girl's income, the whole ten percent, you you don't really owe God anything. Whatever the government wants to give you back, that's their problem. It's your money. Okay, go to Deuteronomy chapter fourteen. Deuteronomy chapter fourteen. So I said point number one. Tithe is still a mandate in the New Testament. Point number two, a tithe is 10% of your increase. Point number three, we don't give tithe, we pay tithe. Point number four, we should tithe our gross income, not our net income. Point number five, are you ready? Point number five, we should tithe our increase, not our income. We should tithe our increase, not our income. Now let me explain. Deuteronomy 14, look at verse 22. Deuteronomy 14, verse 22, the Bible says, Thou shalt truly tithe all the, what? Increase of thy seed that the field bring forth year by year. By the way, in the Bible, you will not find the concept of tithing your income, but the Bible does command us to tithe our increase. Now, what does that mean for you? What does that mean for you? Now, I think a great way to apply that is whenever you get a gift card of $100, <laughs> maybe give 10% to, maybe pay 10% to God. Maybe, maybe whenever someone gives you a gift, you might want to ask me the amount of money and just pay 10% to God. Now, now you might say that's too strict. That is way too strict. And, and to be honest, in my life, I, I, I haven't been doing that perfectly. And I should. And I believe the reason God commands us to tithe our increase is to have a time of reflection. I think a great way to do it is maybe once a month or even once a week, you sit down and you reflect how God has blessed you. And you, and you give and you pay 
the tenth unto God. Now you might think this is too strict. You know how you know you 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 are telling me to estimate the amount of the gift. How much does does this thing someone give me worth? But but notice Jesus Christ. He is not condemning the Pharisees for tithing, mint, anything and coming. They are being strict about it, right? And Jesus Christ said, these all they have done. You should have done that. You should have tithed your increase, not just your income, but, but, but just don't leave the other undone. I believe the reason God gave us uh, this, this requirement is God wants us to reflect. God wants us to realize that every good gift and every perfect, perfect gift comes from above. It's a time of reflection. Maybe you should sit down once a month and just think about how God has blessed you. Maybe someone gave you some, some check of charity. Maybe, maybe, maybe someone gave you a gift card or some gifts. You know, it's a great time to reflect how God has blessed you and, and just give back what belongs to God in the first place. Now, this concept is not new. Look at verse 24. Deuteronomy 14, verse 24. The Bible says, And if the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, or if the place be too far from thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there, when the Lord thy God has blessed thee. Now in the Old Testament, they literally give their, uh, their herd, their flock, their sheep, their corn, their wine, unto the, uh, unto the priest. Now the Bible says, If it's too long for you to travel, if you can't carry your sheep for like a hundred miles, what are you going to do? Verse, verse number 25. Then shalt thou turn it into money. See? That, 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 that's what I'm telling you. You know, whenever you get a gift from someone else, when, whenever God bless you, it's okay to estimate an amount and, and just pay the tenth to God. Because in the Bible... The Bible does say we should tithe our increase, not our income. So even if you don't have a job, maybe someone gave you a gift card, maybe someone gave you a Starbucks gift card, think about that. Think about how God has blessed you. Think about how God has used other people to bless you. Now, you, now you might think it's too strict, but you know, I'd rather to be right with God than not. You know, I'd rather to think about how, how good that God is, how many good things that God has blessed me. Go to Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. You know, I believe God wants us to have a time of reflection. You know, I, I think God wants us to stay away of, 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 of this love of money. Because a lot of people, you know, they are kind of offended. They are kind of shy away from, from the teaching on money. But, but the problem is, the reason I believe God wants us to, to pay uh, Him first, pay Him 10%, to, to pay, pay the increase, is God wants us to let go of our material possessions, but think on Him only. You know, Malachi chapter 3. So I said point number one, tithing is still amended in the New Testament. Point number two, a tithe is 10% of your increase. Point number three, we don't give tithe, we pay tithe. Point number four, we should tithe our gross income, not net income. Point number five, we should tithe our increase, not income. Point number six, there are blessings and cursings associated with tithing. There are blessings and cursings associated with tithing. Now, 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 I have already told you that Malachi chapter 3 is talking about the, the priest specifically stealing from what belongs to God. But I believe we, we as the royal priest who can draw from, 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 from the same application. Malachi chapter 3, verse number 8, the Bible says, Will a man rob God? Yet he have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee in tithing offerings? Notice, Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. So the Bible says, when you are dishonest with tithing, when you are stealing from what belongs to God in the first place, ye are cursed with a curse. See, let me just help you, let me just help you grasp this concept. God will get a tithe out of you one way or the other. <laughs> that the problem is not uh, when you are going to give God. The problem is how you are going to give God. Let me just give you a simple, a simple example. You know, you parents with young, with young child. When you tell your kid to do something, the problem is not whether they're going to do it. The problem is how they're going to do it. Whether, whether, whether they're going to do it out of obedience or whether they're going to do it with, uh, with a bunch of spanking. 
same idea with God. You're going to do it. God will get the tithe out of you one way or the other. The problem is not whether you're going to do it. The problem is how you're going to do it. See, you might be end, up, end up paying a hospital bill. Now, I, I'm, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just telling, telling the, the truth. God will get a tithe out of you one way or the other because you owe God. It belongs to God. You maybe end up playing, paying the car repairment. See, the matter of fact, that is, the problem is not whether you're going to pay tithe or not. The problem is how you're going to pay tithe or not. Are you going to pay it with God's cursing or are you going to pay it with God's blessing? Notice verse number 10. Malachi 3 verse 10, the Bible says, Bring ye all the tithings to the storehouse, that there may be meat in thine house, and notice, and prove me now herewith. So here was God saying, I dare you. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pull you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. So here's what God is saying. I dare you. I want you to take this tithing challenge. So God wants to invite you to this tithing challenge. Now, the matter of the fact is, I'd rather live with 90% or less with the blessing of God than live with 100% with the curse of God. Now, some people, now some people may say, I, I can't afford to tithe. Hey, now, here, here's the problem. The beauty of tithe is it's not a fixed amount. It's a percentage. So no matter how much you make, it's still 10%. So everyone who has increase or, or, or has a job can tithe. Now you may say, I can't afford to tithe, but I can't afford not to tithe. Because in the Bible, there's clear blessings and cursings associated with tithing. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. So the Bible is clear there are blessings and cursings associated with tithing, and personally, I'd rather live with 90% with the blessing of God than with 100% with the curse of God, because I can't afford not to tithe. See, the problem is, it's not whether you're going to do it, it's how you're going to do it, with God's blessing or with God's cursing. Go to Proverbs chapter 23. Two more verses, and we are done. Proverbs 23. So I said point number one, tithing is still a mandate in the New Testament. Point number two, a tithe is 10% of your increase. Point number three, we don't give tithe, we pay tithe. Point number four, we should tithe our gross income, not our net income. Point number five, we should tithe our increase, not our income. Point number six, there are blessings and cursings associated with tithing. Point number seven, I want to talk about the purpose of tithing. The purposes of tithing. Now, I've I've already talked about you know we should pay our pa- we should pay our pastor, you know maybe Lord willing eventually we'll even pay the full time church staff in the in the future you know uh, the tithing is used to pay for uh, the, you know, the 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 things of the temple in the Old Testament and I believe you know the tithing can be used to pay for the church activities and functions you no know, uh, we should we can we should pay the bill right you know do you, do you realize that everything costs money. <laughs> To run the whole building to to pay for the you know, water, the gas, and the uh, electricity. You know to to pay for the bus, the insurance, registration. Everything costs money. But I believe the most important purpose of tithing is God wants to to realize that He has the preeminence of all things. The Bible says in Colossians chapter one, you you don't have to turn there. And He talking about Jesus. And He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things He might have the preeminence, including your money. In all things that He might have the preeminence. Now, a lot of people who shy away from the concept of money, they, they might be offended for what I said tonight. But, but the problem is, maybe the reason I'm offended is, maybe you are laboring to be rich. So why are you so offended about money? The Bible says in Proverbs 23, look at verse number 4. Proverbs, Proverbs 23, verse number 4. The Bible says, Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. But notice verse number 5. He's talking about money. Will thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? 
Will thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings then fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Here you go. So the Bible says money tends to disappear. Money tends to disappear. Now, you think God cares about money? <laughs> Jesus Christ certainly doesn't care about money. He led Judas to be in charge of money. Right? God doesn't care about money, but He wants us to, he wants to use the smallest thing. You know, he wants us to use, he, He's using the unrighteous mammon to help us realize that it is God who's giving us all good things. Because every good thing that we have comes from God. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 8. This will be the last scripture we're going to turn to. Deuteronomy chapter number 8. Deuteronomy chapter number 8. Now, there are a lot of people who invest their money in stock market. Again, I'm, I'm not against stock market. I personally uh, invest in stock market. But I think the best investment you can ever have is paying God. It's giving unto the work of the ministry. See, I'd rather lose my financial uh, possession, I'd rather lose that, you know, I'd rather see the work of the Lord being done. I'd rather support the, the, the people, the group who, who's truly loving God, who, 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 who is on their way to change people's souls and life. Now again, the blessings associated with tithing might not only be the financial blessing. See, God might bless you with a happy, peaceful home. God might bless your relationship with your friends and family and with your children. See, the blessings might not come from only money. Because God wants to realize that every good thing we have comes from Him. Deuteronomy chapter 8, look at verse number 18. Deuteronomy 8, verse 18. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Notice, for it is He that giveth thee power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swore unto thy fathers as it is this day. So, so the question I want to ask you is, is it too big to ask you to pay back what belongs to God in the first place? Is it too big? No, don't, don't, don't realize that it's, it's the full 10%. It's not, 10, it's not 10, 10 bucks a week. It's the full 10%. And notice, it's your, it, it's your increase, not just your income. See, I, see, I said tonight, number one, Tithing is still a mandate in the New Testament. Number two, a tithe is 10% of your increase. Number three, we don't give tithe, we pay tithe. Number four, we, do, we should tithe our gross income, not net income. Point number five, we should tithe our increase, not our income. Number six, there are blessings and cursings associated with tithing. Point number seven, we, we realize that uh, uh, every good thing we have comes from God. Now, to end this sermon, I want to just ask yourself some questions, you know, I want you to answer it in your heart. Maybe you have been tithing, but, but, but have you truly tithed? Notice the Bible says, Thou shalt truly tithe. Because a lot of people who are going through the motion of tithing, but have you think about how God has blessed you? See, you may, you may have been tithing, but have you truly tithed? Have you tithed the full 10%? You may have been tithing, but have you truly tithed? Let me ask you, have you tithed 10% of your income, or just a random amount every week? Or a random amount every month? Have you tied your increase and not your income only? Now, have you reflected how God has blessed you? If, if that's the case, what did you do about it? The Bible says, Remember God, for it is He that giveth thee the power to get wealth. The money belongs to God in the first place, and it is not too much of a thing to ask you to pay back what belongs to God in the first place. Let's give Him the preeminence in all things. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for your word. And just help us be honest for our uh, tithing and giving, Lord. Just help us be generous, Lord. And help us realize that you are the giver of all good things. And help us realize that. Help us reflect upon your grace and reflect upon, upon your goodness so that the work of you may be manifested. I pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.